Hey there! Did you know you can get exclusive behind the scenes updates and early access to new episodes if you sign up for the newsletter? You can do that at lesbianromantic.com slash newsletter. That's lesbianromantic.com slash newsletter. Let's get this party started. Just kidding. Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is The Diva Story, Part 4. Mom, she doesn't even like opera, Millie said, rubbing the bridge of her nose. Now, honey, that sounds unlikely. She spends huge amounts of money supporting the Met, Millie's mother replied. No, she doesn't. Her parents do. Millie slumped back against her pillow. Last night had been one of the most uncomfortable evenings of Millie's life. Not only had she been profoundly disappointed to realize the elderly Mrs. Leroy wouldn't be her patron, her actual benefactor hardly knew anything about opera. Hannah Emsworth had been cordial, but her questions had been so out of touch, so stunningly uninformed, Millie had completely shut down. She had had a hard time keeping up even the bare minimum of conversation. The evening really had been a total disaster. Mom, what if she pulls the grant? I was horrible to her, Millie said. Her stomach was tied into a knot the size of a football. I'm sure you weren't, Millie. Her mother was so calm and patient. Millie thought she didn't get how serious this was. We didn't talk for like 45 minutes, Mom. You mean there was little conversation? I mean there was no conversation. We just sat there and ate. Millie's mother was silent for a moment. Was it a comfortable silence? She finally asked. Millie threw one of her old decorative pillows off the bed. No, it was really, really uncomfortable. Oh. Millie rubbed her cheek. She was tired. She had been staring at the ceiling for a long time last night in bed. She had relived the evening over and over again. Around 3 a.m., Millie had finally drifted off, but it had been a restless sleep. Her Fitbit had warned her she had only slept for two hours and 50 minutes when she woke up. Another disaster, since she had an intensive session planned with her singing coach later this morning. It'll go better next time, honey. How old did you say this Miss Emsworth is? Her mother asked. I don't know, Millie sighed. Not much older than me. Her mother was tapping the phone with one of her nails, something she always did when she was thinking. It was annoying and endearing at the same time. And what does she do? Millie pulled up the sheets over her head, suddenly wanting to hide from everything and everyone. She runs the Leroy chocolate business. Her mother stopped tapping the phone. Oh, of course. That makes sense. Well, honey... Her mother said in that typical I'm about to give you advice tone. You'll just have to make the best out of this. You should be very grateful to this young woman and her family. You wouldn't have this opportunity without them. Millie felt herself starting to blush. I know, Mom. I'm just, she exhaled, I'm just disappointed. I looked forward to learning from Mrs. Emsworth. 
and now I'm stuck with her. I hate opera, daughter. Mildred, I'm sure she doesn't hate it. Millie wasn't so sure. But she didn't want to have the same discussion all over again. She knew her mother was right about owing the family a lot of gratitude. It wasn't her place to criticize them. Well, thanks for listening, Millie said. Always, honey. You got your appointment with Christine in a bit? Millie nodded. Yep. You better get ready then. And get hydrated. Millie knew the drill. Okay, Mom. Thanks again. Give Dad a hug for me when he wakes up. I will. Talk to you soon, dear. Yeah, bye. Millie tossed the phone aside and buried her face in her hands. She was still hiding under the covers. This is going to be a long day, she thought. She guessed she had about two hours before she had to catch the subway to go see Christine, her personal singing coach. She had taken extra classes with Christine since she arrived in New York City a couple of years ago. Millie didn't want to stop these sessions, even though she now had access to much more famous coaches. It was about loyalty, but also about sticking to her habits. And she really liked Christine. Over time, the coach had become more like a friend. Christine was the only person Millie trusted in this whole darn city. <sighs> Might as well study for next week's rehearsals, she thought. She crawled out from under the covers, threw her legs over the side of the bed, and hopped out. But first, a shower, she said dramatically. She always got a bit goofy and hyper when she was really tired. Millie pulled her t-shirt over her head and walked into the tiny bathroom. Millie had a hard time staying focused during her practice. She even forgot her text for the last part of the aria she was singing and gave her coach an apologetic look. Christine, with her landmark blonde curls that were starting to show some gray streaks, arched an eyebrow from behind her piano. You are not focusing, Millie, she simply stated. I know, I'm off balance today, Millie admitted. Body or mind? Christine asked. Millie had answered this question so many times before. It was Christine's way of asking what was stopping Millie from performing at her best. Body and mind, Millie replied. Christine folded her hands in her lap. She was clearly waiting for Millie to continue. Millie really didn't want to. She was so embarrassed about last night's fiasco at the restaurant. She simply could not tell Christine. Her coach would be horrified to hear Millie had messed up her first meeting with the Emsworth family. Millie, this is very out of character for you. To get so distracted, Christine said. She sounded like she was more worried than upset. Millie shrugged. I just slept horribly. Christine got up from her piano bench. Let's talk for a bit. The only times Christine wanted to talk was when Millie had consistently screwed up. And by talking, Christine meant giving Millie a long lecture on commitment and giving your all every single time. The coach lowered herself in a plush chair in the corner of the room. Millie slowly walked over, desperately trying to brace herself for what was about to happen. She sat down opposite Christine and waited silently. Her shoulders slumped. If she didn't respect Christine so much, she would probably be trying to come up with some arguments in her defense. 
but she knew arguing wouldn't work here. Are you feeling overwhelmed by the other participants in the program? Christine asked. Millie lifted her chin, instantly feeling defensive after all. Of course not, she replied. Christine waved a hand. Drop the act, Millie. I truly am not overwhelmed, Millie asserted. Christine leaned forward, her elbow on the armrest of the chair. Were you disappointed about your first lessons then? Millie shook her head. Were the coaches too hard on you? No, no, not at all. Millie stammered, taken aback by Christine's insistence. Did you have the same problems you're having today? Millie's eyes widened. No, of course not. Christine's lips parted. But then she closed her mouth and sat back. She kept her gaze fixed on Millie. <sighs> Millie was losing her temper. She got up from her chair, feeling annoyed. She started pacing around the room, actually considering leaving. Then she remembered where she was and who she was with. This was not professional behavior. Far from it. She had to rein herself in. Now. Millie sat back down. Christine narrowed her eyes, but kept quiet. Millie had no choice but to tell Christine, it seemed. Her coach wouldn't give up. I met my patron last night, and it was a disaster, Millie said bluntly. Christine's brow shot up. Mrs. Emsworth? But she's so nice, I can't imagine. No, Miss Emsworth. Her daughter, Millie said. Her daughter? Christine asked. Her voice shot up an octave. Christine knows Hannah Emsworth? Millie thought. Yes, her daughter, she repeated. Christine leaned back in her chair. That's unexpected. Millie ran a hand through her hair. Tell me about it. Apparently, Mrs. Emsworth is moving back to Europe. Her daughter is taking over all of her engagements, Millie said. Christine shook her head. But that doesn't make any sense. Millie had no clue what her coach was talking about. What do you mean? she asked. Christine stared at the piano for a few seconds. It's just... she... She turned back to face Millie and smiled sadly. Never mind. So, Hannah is in charge of the foundation now? Christine asked. It was Millie's turn to narrow her eyes. Christine seemed to know a lot more about the Emsworth family than she had led on before. Millie was tempted to ask Christine about it, but she didn't want to risk crossing some lines she didn't know about. So Millie just nodded, but then she noticed her coach was staring at the piano again. Yeah, I guess she is, Millie said. <sighs> okay. Christine put her hands on her legs and straightened up. Well, then it will be up to you to find a way to open Hannah's heart to the art form we love so dearly. Millie's eyebrows shot up. What? And how did Christine know Hannah didn't like opera? Really, what was she missing here? Christine grabbed Millie's hand. Look, Mildred, this is no longer just about you. This foundation is really important to the arts in this city. You need to show her that. It's the only way to ensure the foundation will continue to exist. Millie sat back, aghast. After last night, Millie had been worried about her own future. But Christine was acting like the future of the whole frickin' opera world was at stake. Surely it wasn't fair to put this burden on her. 
before Millie could voice her frustration and anxiety. Christine suddenly stood up. She started pacing around the room. Will Hannah, uh, Miss Emsworth, attend the upcoming recital for the patrons? Christine asked. Millie was massaging her forehead. A headache was rapidly spreading from the back of her skull. I assume so, yes. Good, good, Christine said, now resting on her piano bench. She absentmindedly played a few chords. She often did this while she was lost in thought, Millie knew. Okay, you're just going to have to blow the woman away at that recital. Excuse me? Millie croaked. She raised her hand to her throat. She wasn't getting sick, was she? Her voice seemed a bit unstable. Maybe it was the lack of sleep. Christine sat on the edge of her bench and stared at Millie intensely. Dress perfectly. Sing perfectly. And charm that woman off her socks. Millie stared at Christine in shock. What on earth was she talking about? What do you mean? She asked. But Christine wasn't listening. She was wagging her finger at Millie. Yes, we will work even harder for this recital. Let's focus on your interpretation. Millie shook her head. But I have... Christine lifted her hand. No, do not argue with me, Millie. This is really important. Millie scowled. How was this one recital suddenly so exceptionally important? Her coach got up again and walked over. Christine used her full length to tower over Millie. Glaring down, she said, Now is one of those times I'm going to be very strict with you, Mildred. This is not the time to question my judgment. Millie nodded slowly, her eyes wide. Christine looked at her for a few more seconds, then sat back down opposite Millie in the plush chair. Okay, let's find room in our schedules every day until the recital. Make sure you write down what your coaches at the Met tell you, so we can work on that as well. Millie swallowed hard. Christine met her gaze. Millie, you can do this, she said, a bit more warmly now. If anyone can open that woman's heart to the beauty that is opera, it's you. Millie wanted to throw her hands in the air and ask what the fuck was going on. But she didn't. Millie thought of Hannah Emsworth and her bright copper hair. She thought of how the woman had kept asking weird questions, almost like she was reading them from some kind of list. She winced when she thought of the long, uncomfortable silences. I'm not sure I can do this she said quietly. Christine leaned forward, grabbing Hannah's hand again. You must, and you will, Millie. Millie frowned again, not convinced, and most of all, utterly confused. She counted the days left until the recital at the Lincoln Center. Fifteen. She had two weeks to find a way to impress Hannah Emsworth. Millie wrapped a strand of hair around her finger while she thought. If Christine thought this recital was so important, who was she to question her judgment? Well, she could work even harder, she guessed. She could take the little time she had to relax and study instead. She could work out a little less and practice with Christine every day. She still didn't think she could make Miss Emsworth love opera in one night. It might take several recitals, performances, or even dinners. 
that this first evening would be an important start. She had to make up for last night's disaster. Yes, Millie would sing perfectly. She would move perfectly. She would dress perfectly. It was time to become a real diva and blow that damned Hannah Emsworth off her fancy socks. This was part four of The Diva Story. And yes, I've heard you. You want more bloopers. She crawled out from under the covers. She crawled out from under the covers. <laughs> she crawled, crawl, crawled, and gave a... Gr- <laughs> what was that? It was Christine... <clears throat> My... Millie's eyesbrow, eyesbrows, ice, 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 baby. This was the Lesbian Romantic Podcast, episode number 56. Or was it 57? Oh, well. Thank you so much for listening. And I say, bro. There you go. One last blooper. I'll see you next week. <laughs>